this probably isn't the proper setting for a review of Disney Jollywood Nights at Disney's Hollywood Studios. I'm actually looking at it at uh, Cabo San Lucas in Mexico. We're aboard the uh, Disney Magic right now. We're covering um, the start of the Maritime Cruises aboard the ship. Um, there's a couple of new pieces of entertainment. Um, and just our, it's my first time on the Magic. I've completed all my ships at this point, my Disney ships. Yeah, so we're covering a number of things for Disney Cruise Line News Today, which is DCL News Today. Um, you'll find that on, we're on Instagram and Twitter and whatever. If you haven't followed, please go give that a follow because that's the only place we post our Cruise Line content now to keep it separate from the other accounts. But nonetheless, um, my original intention was not to record a honest review of Jollywood Nights yet because I don't feel like I've seen enough of the event to give an honest review. Now, um, the reason I'm taking a couple minutes to do this uh, is because the community at a whole seems to be up in arms about this event, um, which infuriates me because this community rarely is up in arms for anything that actually matters. I, I know the thing that people keep bringing up is how people that Disney hosted, um, you know, uh, hosted media who went to the event for free even said the event was negative and you guys at WW and TR aren't saying anything and blah, blah, blah. Here, here's the first thing. I don't know what kind of review you expect from people who have never paid to go to one of these events to begin with. I don't know what value a review is from someone who's never paid to go to a Mickey's Very Merry Christmas party, that hasn't paid to stay in a hotel in several years, that hasn't uh, paid to do any of these things, right? Um, and a similar parallel will be drawn when we talked about Galactic Star Cruiser, why those reviews didn't matter. Because how could someone who is not financially and personally invested in something give you a review that's going to mean anything to you? And the same thing's going on with Hong Kong, where they've sent a bunch of people, a bunch of American media that's never been there to cover the opening of World of Frozen. They've never seen the park before. They have no idea what they're looking at. And they've paid zero dollars. They haven't paid for flights, which are the most expensive part of going to Hong Kong. They're not paying for the hotel at Explorers Lodge. They're not paying for any of these things, right? And you're never getting an honest review because even if they try to be honest with you, they have no parameters, right? They have no idea of the value of something because they've never personally paid for it in most cases. Um, so that is always the ethical dilemma, right? And there are some entities in the community I know where they have someone on the media list go and they don't offer review thoughts, but then they have people that they send on paid tickets or admission or whatever separately so they can ethically review something. But I will say even in those cases, right? Those, the company paid, right? So in, in look, WDWNT is my thing. So it's, you know, it's my money essentially, right? And so I've, I've paid, I've paid to go. And so I, I think I can offer, uh, in, in many of these cases, when I review something from an international park or a Disney Cruise Line in most cases, like when we did The Wish, um, and in the case of Jollywood Nights, I think I offer a fair review because I have, uh, I have the same financial stakes as you do. And beyond that, I think you guys know me well enough at this point that I am probably, I would say without a doubt, not even probably, the person in this community that cares the most about the Disney product and the Disney company's welfare, I, I have to be the person that cares the most. I am the most invested. I am the most passionate. There, There is no argument there, right? And, and the reason there's no argument is because there's several times where I put my company and my own neck on the line to do what was the right thing, whether it was to stop them from removing the country bears in the Tiki Room from Disney World, or whether it was, you know, saying what needed to be said about cast member pay, um, all these situations were, um, all of these people, if not a majority of them, stayed silent. So why suddenly we're putting stock in these people? Um, because I, I know why we're putting stock in them. I'm going to tell you why you're putting stock in them. Because there's a number of people in the Disney internet community who don't actually want an honest review. They only want an honest review when it fits their narrative. They want an honest review when it uh, tells the story they want told. And I think there's a number of people who wanted the story told that Jollywood Nights was not a good event. And so people were happy to jump on the bandwagon when media, for once, at something they were hosted for, said they didn't like something, which almost never happens. Uh, that almost never happens. Now, Disney food blog, in cases I notice, will sneak in a negative 
uh, review of things that they send the reporter out to review a small dish from usually something they're not hosted for which will be like a, they went to a counter service and got a pizza and it was bad and they'll very nicely say the pizza was bad um, but generally when they're hosted whether it's by a third party that operates within um, the Disney parks and resorts like uh, you know restaurants from the patina group things like that they're very careful with what they say and and so it, it is weird that people who didn't pay to go to Jollywood Nights that were hosted are, are bashing the event. And I'll be honest, as someone who A, paid to go to the event, and B, um, didn't really try to experience it as a guest, really went to go film certain things, I had an agenda, I still got a lot done and did not witness what everyone keeps telling me I should have witnessed. So we put out a, a food review video um, which is me at the Brown Derby, Jazzy Holidays at the Brown Derby, um, the Twilight Soiree at the Tip Top Club at Tower of Terror, um, and I had the Gertie cookie. And the comment underneath immediately was like, what he's not telling you is he waited, he waited an hour for this cookie and blah, blah, blah. No, I waited four and a half minutes for the cookie. Then if you watch the video, they then get the ice cream in stock. I get back in line. Four and a half minutes later, I have the ice cream. So I, I couldn't tell you, maybe at some point it was a 30 minute line. It wasn't when we were there. I can't speak for when other people went. And I know other people went on and on about, they waited 45 minutes um, for the, the show at the, I don't even have the names of things in front of me because I'm just ranting at this point. But Disney Hol Holidays in Hollywood, is that the stage show at the Theater of the Stars with the Muppets? People were like, I waited 45 minutes and blah, 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 blah. We walked into the last one of the night five minutes before it started and had great seats. Here's the thing. We can certainly, I'm not going to have that conversation today. We can talk about the value of Jollywood Nights. And if we think they've had enough for it to be a hard ticket event, we can talk about operationally things that went wrong because things did. It was the first of an event and things went wrong, right? Uh, if you were in the park already and needed the wristband, there was one distribution point and it was at the Mickey Shorts Theater. And that line, I know people waited 30 minutes in that line. And that's not acceptable. And I know people waited a long time at the Tower Terror Bar. I didn't. We were like at the front of the line. Because I rope dropped it. We went to it first. I know people did. There, look, there are certainly operational nightmares. There are certainly things that were done wrong. One of the things I have heard enough about. And, I've, and look, I've complained about this a million times. And I'm glad people finally care. I'm glad finally... Um, after 16 years, this community suddenly has a conscience. It's nice. It's nice that everyone's caught up finally. But like they they pulled certain influencers um, into the front of lines, right? So people waited. Uh, I know there was a family that waited 45 minutes or more to meet Phineas and Ferb. Got to the front of the line. Uh, towards the front of the line, they had already pulled two different influencer groups in. They both took like five, 10 minutes each. And then it started to rain, and Phineas and Ferb left for the night, and they didn't get to meet Phineas and Ferb. That's not acceptable. That's bad show. And Disney, in their PR department, which I always say, should be ashamed of themselves. They do a, a crap job of representing the company they represent. That is not something you do in front of guests. Put them in a back room. Put them at some venue. Let them meet the characters. Hand them some food. Do not let them out in the park and let them cut in front of the guests who paid to be there. The guests have paid to be there. You've told the guests, pay to come to this event and you can enjoy it. Not pay for this event so we can afford to bring influencers in who can then cut you off in line. That's nonsense. Don't do that. Stop doing it. So what I did that night, I did Twilight Soiree. I did the drinks. I saw the show. Uh, did Brown Derby, which was an operational nightmare to get in there. But we got in there and it was that was the one thing I didn't like that night. We'll talk about that at a later time. Because they put up one strand of garland and had a piano player that is, just wasn't, didn't feel like it was what was advertised. Um, and the food, and people said, oh, they, they went on about my food review. I was too positive. I only like three of eight items. That's less than half. What are you watching? Or are you just determined to, to have the review you want? Like you found WWT in a couple times. I've been very honest and I've given negative reviews and I think you like that. But every once in a while I have a positive review and that rubs you the wrong way. It, it ceases to be an honest review if they're all negative. The point of the honest review is to tell you honestly how I feel about it. And that means some will be good and some will be bad. It doesn't mean they'll all be bad. 
the Disney company, no matter what you think, no matter what I think of the current state of the Disney company, they're still capable of both. They're capable of delivering and they're capable of not delivering on something. Uh, whether that if that rubs you the wrong way, I would suggest you go find another channel. And I know there's a couple of channels out there that just do negative and they're not actually being honest with you. And if you think I'm too negative, you can go watch Disney Food Blog and, and stick your head in the sand and ignore the world around you. You can, you can go to either of those things if you'd like. And if you want someone to actually tell you, based on experience, someone who is, look, I live a strange life, right? I live in this zone 306, nearly 365 days a year. I'm on a Disney cruise ship right now. The second I get off of this cruise ship, I'm flying to Hong Kong to go to the opening of World of Frozen. I live in Orlando. I do this professionally. I go to those parks all the time. I go to Tokyo, I go to Paris, I go to all of these. I am fully enveloped in this stuff all the time because it is my career and I am determined to know more about it than anyone else. I'm determined to be the best at this that I can possibly be for, for the benefit of the audience. I do all of that so I have the best product knowledge. I would dare say I have better product knowledge of everything this company does than executives and, and cast members within it. I think there are Disney executives who have not seen a majority of the stuff I have seen of their product. Whether it's all the attractions in the world, the entertainment, the seasonal stuff, their cruise ships, whatever the case may be. Right? So I can form, and I do all that so I can form an opinion that I feel is correct and honest and gives you every side of the story. Historical, um, uh, value proposition, every side of the story is represented when we review something. Um, in the case of Jollywood, um, what did I, I, I got caught up in, in my own rant, uh, but I did, I did Twilight Soiree, Brown Derby, um, Gertie Cookie, and we went to the Muppet Show. Um, we didn't stay for, for, um, Jingle Bell, Jingle Band, because it was raining, and I've seen it a hundred times. And it's a solid show. Yeah, it's behind a paywall now, but you're acting like it's the first time they've ever done that. Um, it, it's not. I, I hate to tell you that, but, um, you know, they kind of did a soft trial run for the new Halloween stuff at DCA several years ago. And I remember we went that year and knowing it was, it was known, everyone was talking about it. We knew the next year there was a hard ticket party for, for California Adventure and which eventually became Oogie Boogie Bash. But that first year, essentially everything was free. Um, obviously they added a lot for Oogie Boogie Bash, um, but, um, it's not it's not the first time in history something began as something outside of a party and then got wrapped into a party right and, and disney world's been doing that forever um a lot of the things you experience at mickey's very merry christmas party began as day as daytime things you could see the christmas parade right they still run it to their credit they still run that parade and the fireworks and all that christmas week and new year's week um for all guests but putting them behind a party paywall is not a new thing um, so let's not pretend this is some new thing Disney has come up with. But from the, the four things I experienced, one of them, I, I didn't like Brown Derby, but um, I thought there was a fair amount of effort in the Gertie cookie. I thought, um, I thought the Twilight Soiree was very good. Um, I thought the entertainment was, was great. The atmosphere was great. A lot of decor. Um, the drinks for being out of a pre-mixed jug were not bad. Um, and I thought the, the stage show, um, I, I will, I will give you a minute of, of review of the stage show because this needs to be said. And so a couple months ago, they brought over David Duffy, um, who was in charge of entertainment. Now I don't, he's not involved in this show, right? The Disney holidays in Hollywood, he was not to my knowledge involved. Um, but David Duffy was brought over and, and, and my belief was that, that Disney world realized that as far as theme park entertainment, they were really miles behind everyone else. Paris, Tokyo, Hong Kong, Shanghai, like pretty much all of the cruise line. Um, pretty much Disney World was was dead last as far as quality of theme park entertainment. And I think they, they knew that. And I think someone was finally like, hey, like we've seen what these other parks are doing. And I think it's time to catch up. And so what I saw in that show were a lot of things that have become the hallmarks of the better entertainment at the international parks and even Disneyland. Um, live eight piece band, very well choreographed dance troupe, live puppeteers, 
Um, you know, new they bought a ton of new props. Um, a, a lot of characters were in the show, and and top tier talent, right? The, what I, I don't know. Look, there's an A cast and a B cast, but the Tiana we had in that show might have been the most talented vocalist I've ever seen in a Disney park resort or, or on their cruise line. Um, I would say far and away, very very talented. The, ch the show was great, and it, what it said to me was Disney World knows where their entertainment is lacking and we are heading in a new direction and, and a direction that's more in line with the quality that everyone else is pumping out. I, I talk about all the time, Disneyland Paris, their entertainment department is untouchable. And it's because they do a lot of stuff like that. That new Pixar show at Walt Disney Studios Paris is one of the greatest entertainment pieces I've seen in any park. Technologically, from a performance perspective, the live music, everything about it's great. Um, and their older show that's in that park, Mickey and the Magician, still holds up. It's still fantastic. It still blows away a majority of what we're doing in Orlando. So I, I think that show shows a tremendous commitment to the future, and we'll see what happens. Now, as for the rest of Jollywood Nights, I have tickets to a couple more. Um, I'm happy to give you guys an honest review somewhere between, um, like, December 17th and 23rd somewhere in that pocket after I've done the event one or two more times. But to go and see some of it and not all of it and offer a review, I think is unethical. I think extraordinarily unethical. And a lot of people told you they had a full event review when they didn't, and that's unethical. But I will speak for the things I saw. And, um, you know, you as the, as the consumer have to figure out if it's worth it for you. You have to figure out if you think that ticket price is worth worth it based on what you've heard at this point, right? So, um, and if those things matter to you. I know we have people on staff that saw the Nightmare Sing Along, they like that show a lot too. Um, so if you like Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam, or you really wanna see a stage show, a tremendous stage show with the Muppets, or you really wanna see that Nightmare Sing Along, if you like the character costumes they rolled out, or you just wanna go try some of the food, um, you have to decide if that's of value to you. And the parties, it's hard to review the parties because everyone has a different goal right there are people who go and their kids want to meet characters and they want to see the parade and the fireworks and then they leave there's other people who like i spent a lot of money i want to see everything i'm going to see the shows i'm going to meet the characters i'm going to go eat this thing i'm going to see the fireworks and the parade like i'm going to be there from the first moment they let me in until i can leave until they push me out of the park um and i think that makes the parties very hard to review because i think everyone has very different goals um, it's like reviewing a Disney park. If, if I had to review a whole Disney park, you know, Raleigh Crump once said that the Disney park is like a salad, right? You have the lettuce, you have the tomato and the dressing and the croutons. And it's all these very different ingredients make the full product. And so um, there's something in there for everybody. And, and the question is, is in that review, can I address each part that is of value to you as the viewer? effectively so you can make a educated decision as to if you should spend your money on that thing or not right it's considerably easier when i review a restaurant uh when we review a new attraction um when we review a new hotel um those are those are considerably easier than a park or a party um, but my thoughts i had a mostly positive time i could see why people did not um, but I, I do think it's extraordinarily un unethical to review an event you didn't experience in full. It's extraordinarily unethical to review um, events you didn't pay for and tell people if it's worth their money or not when you don't have those stakes involved. I think that's very difficult um, to do effectively. Um, look, I'm, I'm glad the community is sort of overcorrecting after many years of just sort of shilling for the company to keep media pre media badges and keep, you know, access to a press list. I'm glad that, that there's sort of some fight back, but I, I think it's still, um, you know, we still have to apply ethics. We can't overcorrect either. So um, I think we need to be fair and balanced. And I think, you know, look, if you follow someone that has a ton of subscribers or, you know, a ton of followers on social media, um, so on and so forth, I will tell you this, they likely make enough revenue from advertising and such to afford to buy that party ticket to give you a valued, a valuable review. You know, WDWNT certainly makes enough money for us to afford to go do that. And I can tell you our competitors, they, they do the same. And even these smaller entities, if they're a one, they're a one man band who does a YouTube channel uh, and have 
a couple hundred thousand subscribers and each video gets 50 to 100 to 150 to 200,000 views and making enough money to afford that ticket to give you a real review and you should hold them accountable for it I would dare say um, it's one thing if they want to go on the media list and just film stuff and just show you things um, but to offer a review when you are not in the position uh, of the consumer it remains unethical those are my two cents. I will give a full Jollywood review eventually, but this has been, as usual, my rant um, and, and uh, continuing my crusade about what's wrong in this community. It's never going to be fixed, but uh, we could we can try. We can all try our best. Now I'm going to go back to trying to review a cruise line itinerary. I'm going to go back to Cabo San Lucas now, um, but I hope you're all doing well and uh you know and again I'll, I'll say this message one more time if you're if you're upset that i'm coming out here and calling you out because maybe you are just being negative in the comments because you're you're not going to even go to the event this year you really just want to be mean on the internet and just rant and rave about a thing you haven't experienced and just only share stories from people that hated the thing um i would i would thoroughly re-examine what you're doing thoroughly re-examine it and again if you want i mean i know there's those channels with those hyperbole youtube titles or disney has failed and, and uh, this is worst ride ever and that you go watch them go watch them and if you think i'm too negative there's people for you too but for everyone else if you want uh an entity that that feels bad you know legitimately if the one or two times people have not agreed with my dining reviews and then went to a restaurant um, I I felt really bad um, because I, I, I take great pride in, in helping people that read the website or watch these videos. I take great pride in doing all this um, so you can better navigate this and have a better time than I'm having <laughs> in most cases. Um, that's, that's what I'm passionate about. That's what I do for a living. That's what I'm going to probably do until the day I die. Um, my review thus far of Jollywood Nights, though, is considerably more positive, I think, than most people but my my review is it's it's middle it's not up it's not down it's it's i think they did some things that they should be very happy with i think they made some operational decisions that they need to re-examine there are a lot of kinks to work out but i think for a first time out i think they did a solid job um they, but it, but if it comes back unimproved next year or they don't figure out some of these things over the run of the next month um, my my thoughts will be very different, but that's why I want to kind of wait, give them to you later. I want to go back in December and see if they fix things. I want to go back in December and see if, you know, maybe the, the absence of influencers makes the event more enjoyable. Um, I don't know. I want to go see. And if you can wait, uh, and if not, if you want to go, like, look, you make that decision if you want to go to this event or not, if you haven't bought tickets yet. If you have bought tickets already, they're non-refundable. You're going. Um, and I think there's enough information out there where you can make the most of it and you'll have a good time. But um, just arm yourself with information. Don't go in blind and then be surprised when Phineas and Ferb is an hour and a half wait. Uh, don't put yourself in that situation is the best thing I can tell you. But that's no different than a park day. It's no different than a park day than going on flight of passage without a lightning lane, right? So I, I don't know why we suddenly pretend that it's, it's a different scenario. But either way... Um, I'm going to get back to my cruise and then to Hong Kong and then I'll see you guys. I'm going to put a plug in here because I have a very captive audience real quick. Uh, when I come back on November 24th, we are hosting a 50-hour live broadcast to benefit Toys for Tots. It's something we do every single year. Uh, so please join us um, right here on the WW News Today YouTube channel for 50 consecutive hours of, of what we hope will be entertaining programming as we raise money for Toys for Tots. Uh, Toys.wwnt.com is the URL if you want to donate. Uh, we also do a very large auction, um, which has, I think, almost 300 items, if not more, this year. Um, and uh, bidding is already open at auction.wwnt.com. So thank you guys for supporting that this holiday season, and I'll see you guys um, real soon. If you're waiting for an honest review, don't worry, that, that World of Frozen one will be up um, very, very soon. Thank you.